if I move this over here and yeah, okay, cool. We're good. Should be live. I'll know if we're live in a couple seconds. Make sure that we're live. Been doing this for over a month, but I'm still not like okay, yeah, it says we're live. It says we're live. Yep, we're live. Cool. Cool, doesn't sound too bad. Alright. All right, welcome in. Uh... We are continuing our playthrough of Dark Souls. Get let up, Severe, looking forward to the talk tonight. Yeah, so. Uh, this is going to be interesting. So. This was a question that I'm turning into a full topic because it kind of deserves it. So. Topic, as you guys have seen in the title and in the top left, is uh, the limits of occult traditions. And I wanted to talk about those because occult traditions are strange. Now, occult traditions are going to vary widely. And occult traditions are kind of a nebulous term, I'll fully admit. But what I mean when I say occult traditions in this case is going to be things like, you know, uh, this is going to be things like the Thelema, the Golden Dawn, Wicca, ATRs, broadly speaking on ATRs, because they have an entire ecosystem in them themselves. But there's a lot of differences in the traditions and each of the traditions has its own different strengths and weaknesses you'll notice this when you go into any lodge structure that is similar in style to the golden dawn because inevitably what happens is something to the effect of someone gets power hungry and tries to make a power play or tries to go full on, yeah, I'm going to be the leader of this massive organization. And it causes a bunch of problems for just everyone involved. Look how ugly we look. Mm -hmm. So it's going to cause a bunch of problems. And I think that personally, this is a problem in all lodge structures, but specifically, I think that this is a biggest, the biggest issue in Golden Dawn offshoot style traditions. And the reason for that is because they're going to be... Those are going to be the ones where it's actually like the biggest issue. As weird as that sounds. Because those being more solar have a higher innate basis on your own personal development. And... After a while, that leads to wanting to become the leader. And if you look at the old-style grimoires, this is a common thing that they used the sun for. And the reason why I bring this up for the Hermetic Order, Order of the Golden Dawn is because Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn is probably the most solar thing I can think of in terms of the occult traditions. Now, that being said, this is not the issue with Thelema. Thelema has a little bit of a different issue. Because Thelema's focus is much more on your will. However, in a very bizarre turn of events, Thelema focusing on the will... If I remember correctly, the biggest organization other than the OTO, is the AA, 
which reminder I'm not a I am not a member of these traditions I am just commentating on them with very little it actual like first-hand experience on these traditions except for the solitary golden dawn stuff that I am a solitary golden dawn person being said the AA is I believe it stands for like silver star it's like argentum something we'll, we'll get to Wicca don't worry we'll get to Wicca so the issues with the Lima are typically that people get into it for one the wrong reasons and two as a tradition it really is divorced from its founder in a way that i would say that no other tradition really is like in general that that being said uh the golden dawn is a broken tradition compared to Thelema, which is a more or less unbroken tradition. There's various offshoot flavors of Thelema. And the problem with Wicca is... And this is going to sound really weird. It's a dex int build. I usually go strength faith. For those of you wondering about my Dark Souls build. It's uh, mostly de mostly int. It's a sorcerer build. Just because of the channel. But the issues with Thalima are going to be that Thalima, you're going to... It focuses on your true will, but you don't really get in touch with that at the beginning. You get in touch with that after several layers. Several layers. Of the process. Now... The thing about that is you go through the layers of the process and, you know, the process works. But if you don't know what your true will is, how are you supposed to, like, get it? And the other issue is they treat that as, like, an end goal. Like, they, you know, the, the Aubrey and I, I once heard, I don't know how true this is. So this, we're, we're completely tinfoil hat speculation, but if you say that you want to do the Abra Melon, regardless of what grade you're currently in, they, like, suspend you at the moment and then just say go for it, and then they just, if you succeed, you get skipped to, like, Adeptus Miter. Which is funny, because that's, like, where the, uh, that is the initiation into the Adeptus grade. Now, the issue with Wicca is that, and this is going to sound really bizarre, the issue with Wicca is that Wicca has kind of been co-opted by the internet. And I, I, I know that sounds weird, but it really is that Wicca's problem is that a lot of the stuff going around is that it is not Wicca. So the end goal would be figuring out what your end goal is. The end goal is figuring out what your end goal, but it's basically shipped as you just figure out what that end goal is and then you're done, which is the issue. Like, that is the entire issue. Now, how do they verify that you've done the Arbor Melon? You can tell if somebody's done the Arbor Melon. You can tell. And yes, I'm saying that Cyber Wiccans are in fact the, the downfall and the problem with... They are actually the problem with, um, what's it called? I need to, like, grind up souls and, like, level vitality, I swear to god. We might take a detour in this if I, uh, don't... If I can't fix my chronic skill issue. But yeah. So, you're going to have this problem where Wicca has been co-opted. People in the Golden Dawn have a tendency of being either incredibly humble or incredibly prideful. There is no in-between. And you're going to have the Thelema people whose major goal... The, the goal of Thelema 
is the Adeptus minor grade work of the HOGD. Oh, God. So, the HOGD, while not being bad, is going to cause incredibly prideful people. This is where you get such wonderful things as Aleister Crowley and, uh, I think it was WB Yates kicking him down the flight of stairs. Like, that's where you get the flashy drama from. It's, it's those currents. Now, that being said, is that actually a problem? Not usually. Now, I haven't mentioned any grimoires yet. I haven't mentioned any grimoires yet, because those are kind of different in their own weird way. The grimoire tradition has a problem of... Where are the Therian, Ewick, and Catboys at? Oh god, don't, don't even start with that. People might take you seriously. So, the grimoire tradition has a weird problem where, depending on the grimoire, there's going to be blinds in and of itself. And even worse, depending on the grimoire, it's just going to be... Yeah, okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. cool. Uh, okay. I don't have the magic resist for this place yet. Down to, uh, down to somewhere else I go. I haven't killed half of the rock yet. Probably killed half of the rock. So, the problem with the grimoires is that they fully expect you to be a good Christian, a good pious Christian man. And I do mean man. They, like, the, the grimoires are sexist. A little bit. A little bit sexist. Here and there. Now, the grimoires are going to fully expect that you pray to God before you actually do anything. Like, before you do even the the tiniest bit of work in the grimoires, they expect you to be praying to God that the operation succeeds from the get-go. From the get-go, they expect you to be a very pious individual. We get to play how badly did this 16th century Italian aristocrat butcher an Aramaic text that was already poorly translated to to Abraham Arabic game oh yeah no 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 it's um it's it's yeah that really is how it goes because uh those texts are old and those translations are poor uh I rant about this in the Almadel video I did where the Almadel is actually like the resulting byproduct of a game of telephone that was played using an Arabic text known as the Al Mandel, which, for those of you wondering how messed up the Ar the Al Mandel text is, it says to make a wax tablet. If I remember correctly, the Al Mandel originally says that you're supposed to make it out of metal, like you're supposed to metal work this into being functional. Which, that in and of itself is pretty wild, how we went from metal to wax. I did kill us, right? Yeah, I did. Cool. Now, there's also the translation game, which, I don't know if you guys know this. Most occult grimoires are poorly translated. Like, most to all of them. Can someone theoretically... Can someone theor theoretically use magic to turn themselves into a doomslayer of sorts to purge spirit parasites? Yes, you can. It's called being a Christian. That's only half joking, by the way. Um, it's important to know that, like, and I mentioned this in a 
video that is currently Patreon exclusive. It'll go up sometime, I think, next month? Next month? It... There's a video on this. It's on the Patreon. If you're not on the Patreon, it will be available for free eventually. Uh, where I talk about how the spiritual benefits of the, quote, Christian tradition are being able to do exorcism in the first place. And when I say exorcism, I mean, like, compelling spirits in the name of Christ. Which, you know, that's it's kind of a weird concept in and of itself. How much does the translation matter considering the poor translations worked for operators of the time? Um, I'm going to go and cite Aaron Leach a little bit here, and I'm going to paraphrase him. If you know a translation is wrong and you keep using it, the spirits will yell at you. That's the main issue. Like, it, and if you don't believe in spirits, it'll keep nagging at you to do it. So, Aaron Leach has a great story where he has a talisman that he made out of a grimoire, and the grimoire itself was mistranslated, and then he got a better translation, and he didn't want to reconsecrate the talisman, because reconsecrating a talisman is a pain in the ass, and he didn't want to have to remake the talisman, and then the spirits of the talisman kept nagging him and nagging him and nagging him until he relented and finally did go through and he went through and reconsecrated the talisman i've never been hit by those guys okay i really do suck when i stream anyways yeah so it's going to be a case of you're going to want to use as accurate of a grimoire as you possibly can because the spirits themselves are the ones who care more than we do. Honestly, like, think about it like this. Most of the time, if you're breaking protocol and it works, you don't care. But if a spirit knows you're breaking protocol and you know you're breaking, and, and they know you know you're breaking protocol, they're going to yell at you. Because you're not supposed to be breaking protocol. You're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Like... That's the whole point of doing the magic in the first place, is you're supposed to be following the grimoire, because the grimoire is a grammar book of magic, effectively. And that's going to be the issue there. Now, aside from broken, broken translations, we also have a case of some of the things are just not feasible. Some of the things are just not feasible. Now... I know that I get comments on uh, whenever I do the PGM and I mention that they're, they were actually like sacrificing animals in those. How does it take like 600 years to get proper translation of a lot of these works then? Um, it takes 600 years because... Well, you, you also need to realize we have a cult selection bias. Like, we don't know the original book that the Pseudomarchia Daemonum and the Ars Goetia are based on. We don't know what that book is. We don't. We think we know... We think it's something related to the Book of Oberon, but we cannot verify what book it actually is. That makes sense? Like, we... It's possible we just don't have it possible that we just don't have it at all. Is this where the ladder is? No. Did I make a wrong turn? I think I made a wrong turn. I'm just gonna say I made a wrong turn. Why does it take 600 years? Yeah, so it takes 600 years because we usually have... So there is a translation, but it's just that Unless you read the original Latin texts, which, uh, fun fact, is very much not easy to get a hold of in modern day, even if you are named Eric Perdue and you're trying to tra do a new translation of Agrippa, even he had a couple problems getting access to all of the documents, because some of them are, like, are, are actually 2,000 years old. Yes, that makes sense, but it... If it mattered more to the spirits, you would think the mainstream translators would have become accurate for the month. 
translations. Well, I mean, the issue is... Occultism isn't popular. Like, occultism isn't exactly the most popular field. So it's less that it's the spirits were upset, and for a long period of time, they were just happy to have somebody to talk to them at all. Because a lot of spirits are, like, the ones that want to talk to us are actually the ones who are more friendly to people and more communicative in the first place. Which is something that a lot of people don't get, is that there are a functionally infinite number of spirits. Not all of them want to talk to us, though. Like, not everyone wants to talk to us when it comes to the spirit world. And if you look at modern day, you will be hard-pressed to find a way you can argue with them about the fact that a vast majority of people are not worth talking to. A vast majority of people are not worth talking to. And even if you are one of those kinds of spirits that is more willing and ready to talk to people, it's difficult to know whether or not you should talk to people, for one, or if you should talk to people, it's difficult to know if the person is going to be receptive to what you have to say. Because usually the way most, like, n we're talking 90% of spirit communication in the Western tradition goes, is uh, you, as the evoker, call up the spirit, you then proceed to make sure that the spirit is who they say they are, and you then go from, hey, I want to make sure you are who you say you are, to, okay, where's the buried treasure at? if your name is Dr. John D. and Edward Kelly. Because um, a, a vast majority of magical texts are like that. And you just call up the spirit. You don't really, you know, spirits... In the West, we don't really let spirits pop in. And that's that's what I call it. We don't really let spirits pop in in the West. Mostly because if we do let a spirit pop in, on occasion, it's like a lower demon or something. Or it's like a, an energy parasite and it's just not worth talking to in the first place. There you are, you little bugger. So that's why we don't really let s spirits just pop in like that. Now, another thing is sometimes the ability to even replicate the magic itself is lost which you know we just don't know what certain go look at agrippa uh specifically eric purdue's version and go check and see how many animals eric purdue is not able to figure out what the hell they even are like, what does the wolf fish mean? Meanwhile, there's stuff that is like, yeah, go sacrifice this bird. Like, go sacrifice this eagle. And it gives you proper, like, here is how you get the invisible servant. And you have to go through this, like, eagle drowning ritual in the PGM. And it's like, oh, God. Like, I'm not going to sacrifice an eagle. That's fucked up. But this is what they were doing back in the day. Now, keep in mind, it wasn't everyone, with uh, one notable exception. That is, there was a bird who, if I remember correctly, was killed out of... Like, it was sacrificed in love spells because the love spells were so effective so often, it's dead. Now, I can't find the source on that, but I did hear about that. So, apparently, due to magic, there is an entire species of bird that is just no longer with us. Uh, rest in peace, birdos. Which is, is weird, but you gotta remember... It, it does kind of suck to say this, but, um... Ye olden occult practitioners didn't exactly place the value 
that we place on certain things on the same things. Like, the reason why Jupiter corresponds to tin is because back in ye olden days, tin was literally worth more than gold. Even touching certain animals today will lead to hefty jail time. Yeah, like, there is a reason why we can't do those other than the moral reasons like you know some some traditions and some practices are totally fine with just like killing an animal that being said i'm not in any of those and i don't i'm not a fan i'm not a fan of that kind of stuff at all the relationship is very different but and also be, there are a lot of substitutions like, there, there's a... Um, oh, boy. There, there's a couple things that the PGM says to do that if you read between the lines, it's either a blind, a joke, or how to get yourself cursed. Welcome in. And it's not, like, good to do. Like, you shouldn't be doing all of the big... You shouldn't be doing those in the first place. But then you read them and it's like, some of those are just a pain to do for, like, space reasons, right? And this is the problem with the greater key, because if you want to work the greater key properly, you need all the pentacles. But in order to get the pentacles, you need to make the pentacles. If you're going and doing it properly, which... Let's be honest, not everyone is willing to do it properly. Oh god. Yep, I'm dead. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Taking a swig. So, not everyone is willing to do the work out of the grimoire properly. That being said... There's a lot of stuff that we just can't replicate nowadays. Like, there's a reason why all the... There is a reason why the Abramelon has so many myths about it that I decided to do a video debunking as many as I could think of at the time. Because if you go through and you read some of the, like, misinformation about the Abra Melon, it blows your mind how people are even able to do it. And then you read the actual book and it's not that bad. Um, which the Abra Melon has its own problems where if you, uh, you need to follow protocol with those spirits a lot better. Do a job, big or small, do it right or not at all. Yeah, that really is the case. Like, it, it is impossible to do the job at all. Let alone right. Because a lot of... Here's a weird thing. Uh, just for chat, did y'all know that there is like a consecration ritual for paper in the Greater Key? Like for, for parchment paper type stuff. Like, here is how you consecrate paper for your ritual talismans. Which, that in and of itself is, is pretty wild, all things considered. Like, that is absolutely wild. That being said, most people don't really think about that. Like, most people aren't going to think about that. Because when are you going to need the paper consecration from the Greater Key of Solomon and the Ink as well? I think. Yeah, you actually... um. There's a consecration for, like, all the consecrations in the Greater Key are kind of bizarre. They go from, you have the consecration of the water, the consecration of the salt for the water, the consecration of the incense, the consecration of the candle, the consecration of the materials you're making the talismans out of. Very specific instructions for making the talismans. And it, the list does, in fact, go on. And uh, as somebody who has 
Uh, and then you have like a week of fasting if you want to do it right, and you need to pray beforehand, and those prayers are long, as most old grimoire prayers are, because they want to make damn sure that they only need to pray once, and they don't need to go back and, you know, reconsecrate all the implements and all the tools and regalias and stuff. So that's going to be an absolute massive undertaking if you want to do those. And then you do the operation, and depending on what you call up, it, it becomes a very interesting situation where you don't need to use the pentacles in, like, a literal sense. Often, metaphorical stuff will also work. Like, you can use the fifth pentacle of Mercury. Why are they so specific and in detail? Um... Because they needed to be at the time. So, okay, the methodology by which we do magic nowadays is very different from the methodology done by yielding grimoire practitioners. They're going to... <laughs> Caleb. Uh, they're going to have the situation of... If it doesn't work, it's complete trash. Throw it away. Don't try to figure out why it didn't work. The magic just doesn't work, right? In modern day, we will, like, try to figure out... Like, I did an entire occultic manual trying to figure out, like, here is how you verify magic. We actually care about verifying the magic a lot more than they did back in the past. Their entire MO was if magic worked... It worked if it didn't. It was garbage, and the spirit was a liar. Like, that happened a lot. You can see that in such wonderful works as the Diaries of Dr. John D. Which, you know, that that's never not going to be funny to me. Because uh, in some of those diaries, they go like... I believe it's the angel Raphael goes, Disregard everything from the previous two conversations, those were eluder spirits. In modern day, we take a more analytical view. Yeah, that really is the, the problem. We have a... Okay. Yeah, we, we definitely do take on a more analytical view when it comes to modern day magic, so to speak. Is it because we're in the Age of Mercury? I think it's partially because of the Age of Mercury, but partially because we're just more skeptical like we're much more cynical people than the people writing the grimoires in terms of how cynical modern day people are i would say that we're much more cynical than the occultists of old that being said i would say that that's not necessarily a problem anymore the issue, and in case you're wondering, the issue with modern traditions, like the modern occult tradition, is one, some people spend too much time on fucking Twitter, or, or as I put it earlier today, the platform formerly known as Twitter. What a stupid fucking rebrand, dude. Like, that, like, that is such a stupid fucking rebrand. I'm sorry, I... Uh, anyways, yeah, so, a lot of people are going to have problems where in the ma more modern traditions, the issue is mostly going to be related to the fact that in modern occultism, we are a lot more skeptical of if magic is even real. Now, in the past, they definitely believed that magic was real, so belief was not really an issue for them. But in modern day, there's... It becomes a question of, is your magic working, or are you going crazy? I didn't kill the Black Knight. Okay. Um... Yes, I could parry Kingdom, but one soul spear kills him, I don't care. 
anyways. Yeah, so most people are going to be a lot more skeptical than the occultists of old were, which is where we get shit like the psych paradigm, and we try to figure out in a much more analytical way, how does magic even function, right? Because if you don't know how magic functions, you're going to be confused when it works. But if you know how it works, then it's less of an issue. And in case you're wondering, yes, we will be grinding for Drake's soul. For uh, souls on the Valley of the Drakes. Yeah, we're just going to do that. Anyways. Because I don't have the magic resistance to go through the library, and I want to upgrade my armor. Because I don't think I do enough damage right now. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. That... That's the biggest issue with the modern occult scene is you're going to have people who are going to be incredibly skeptical. Would you say chaos magic is a very modern tradition? It is, to my knowledge, one of the only modern traditions. And it's not really a tradition. It's more of a... <sighs> Calling chaos magic a tradition feels like you are both doing a disservice to chaos magic and you're giving it too much credit because there's a lot of stuff that falls under the banner of chaos magic like sigils fall under chaos magic and i think everyone would kind of agree that those are chaos magic but sigils originally come from agrippa so the Austin Osman spare method of sigil making actually comes from Agrippa, who presumably got it from other sources. Is it even old enough to be a tradition? Well, the thing is, it's not really a tradition. It, like, calling chaos magic a tradition is like saying that the Golden Dawn, Thelema, and Wicca are all the same thing. Because that's what you're doing when you say the chaos magic tradition. Because it really isn't like... You know, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but it's not really a tradition. It's not really like a, a magical tradition in like the traditional tradition sense. Traditional tradition sense. Yep, that's what I'm... That's how we're phrasing it. And do I think chaos magic is, like, bad? Do I hate chaos magic? No. Most of the time I forget it exists. Because chaos magic kind of also lost its identity in a weird way. Chaos magic really, like, lost its identity. And now it's kind of... Ooh, some frame stutters there. It really did lose its identity in a weird way. Because nowadays, everyone does chaos magic as part of their regular practice, but they don't call themselves chaos magicians. You don't call what you do chaos magic, you just say you're experimenting, which was the entire MO of chaos magic in the past. Chaos magic, when you have God and anime on your side, yeah, that really is chaos magic. Like, modern chaos magic, you can tell a modern chaos magician because they're going to have a lot of anime bullshit, like, surrounding them in just their, like, physical space. They're gonna have, like, a lot of anime bullshit, and it's gonna be an absolute nightmare. Okay. Cool. My equipment... Of course. I need to give him a large magical ember, don't I? Alright. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, chaos magic is going to be... Chaos magic, everyone does chaos magic and just doesn't know. Or care. Like, if you're experimenting, you're technically doing some amount of chaos magic. 
Not necessarily anime, but it does seem popular amongst the kids these days. Older chaos were borderline LHP at times. I believe it. I believe that they were basically doing demon stuff half the time. Because if everything is true and... Or if nothing is true and everything is permitted, then, uh, you know, we get... Basically, it's the philosophy of hedonism. It's like the magical practice of hedons at that point. Like hedonists, not heathens. Nice to see Chris in the chat correcting me about chaos magic, adding his two cents. If I say chaos magic, uh, too many times he shows up. The fictional stuff became popular in the 90s, to my understanding. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a fan of the chaos magic stuff. You know that, but... The entire thing is just very bizarre to me. The entire chaos magic scene is very bizarre to me. Because it's a lot more than just going through and it, it's a lot more than just going through and um, what's it called? Experimenting. There's a lot of stuff there. It's like, would this even work? And then it does. And then they're like. No wonder the Chaos Magicians are so skeptical. They do a bunch of stuff that makes everyone think, are you crazy? And the answer, like, 50% of the time is yes. Like, I, I, I give them a solid 50-50 on whether a Chaos Magician is crazy based on if they called themselves a Chaos Magician alone. When the 2000s hit, a lot of the older types started distancing themselves from the term chaos magic, though. Some of those have developed a love-hate relationship with it. Um, I mean, I don't blame them. Seeing what chaos magic has become in modern day is kind of a weird situation in and of itself. Because you go through, you have the chaos magic, and... And, you know, chaos magic is just kind of weird. Like, chaos magic is just kind of weird overall. Because you have... You go through and you have... Uh, how do you... Se how do you separate effective magic from luck or coincidence? That's a good question. The answer is luck and coincidence can be very similar, but if things... Typically, it's if things were going to happen before you did magic and they happen, that's not you, that's just magic working. Or, um, reverse that, I think. If you were going to... If something was going to happen and you did magic and then it happens, then, you know, that's not the magic working, that's just you... That thing was going to happen regardless. But if you go through and you have a situation where it's like, I did magic to get this new job, and I got this new job, and you weren't going to get the new job before, like you, you weren't even looking for a job and you suddenly get a job offer, then that's that kind of thing is magic. Usually, you can tell coincidences, and this does take a little bit of experience, I will admit. Like, you can tell coincidences from effective magic, because if they're coincidences, it's really... It sounds stupid, but the more you do magic, the more obvious, like, actual coincidences come. Like, actual coincidences are from magical situations overall.
Because, like, let's say... And it's hard to explain, but, like, there's just kind of a sense of, oh, this happened because of this ritual, or this happened because I talked to this person. It really is, like, a very different vibe you get from, like, how it manifests, even, I would say. That being said, if what you get, like, if you cast for something and it manifests, just count that as being magic, even though... Just count it. Doesn't really matter. Oh, alright, so it's independent from other action. Yeah, no, magic... Magic will seem like... Uh, okay, magic, when something manifests, will seem like there is an entire chain of events that leads up to that thing that you are casting for manifesting, right? So it's not like, oh, I cast for a thing and then it just happened. It's usually like, I cast for, I cast for a new girlfriend and then I get invited to a party and then on a whim I say yes, which is very unlike me because I fucking hate the person who invited me, but I decided, fuck it, I'll, I'm bored, I want to go to a party, and you go to the party and then you end up meeting your new girlfriend, right? At that party. Like, you, you hit it off and you end up with a new girlfriend. That's the kind of shit that happens when it's actually, like, magically influenced as opposed to... You do... Ma uh, cool. Huh. Yeah, that is gorgeous. The tower. Anyways. Um, yeah, so... It's different from, like... You don't cast for a new girlfriend and you just, like, go on a dating site or something. Like, it's... It, it's weird, but it's less direct. Usually. Like, it's, it's very much less direct when it comes to how it manifests in that regard. I forget, is this where the bowling ball cats are? I think so. So yeah. Magic is going to very much be less direct. And, I mean, I'm pretty sure... So we have the Golden Dawn, Wicca, Renaissance Grimoires. I talked about Thelema a little bit, too. Uh, that's the ones I'm, like, qualified to talk about, really. Uh, there are more traditions. There are more traditions, like Taoism. There's, like, Taoism, various other, like, religious-style traditions. But for the most part... Oh, hello there. Oh, hello there as well. Oh, shit. Is that fucking Zweihander? Okay. Anyways. The whore... The Holy Order of Spazalord. <laughs> yes, that's true. That is the most powerful Holy Order. There's also the uh, Cult of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Can't forget those guys. Very important in the uh, history of occultism. Hard to find good tower stuff in English, but you can get... But you can find it. I mean... Good... Good information is hard to find in general, right? I just got, like, a full D&D &D party dropped on me. We had a rogue, a ranger, and a cleric. Mm. Anyways. Clearly. Oh. Like. Souls. Oh. 
Would alchemy be a tradition or is it an element or is it just an element of it? I mean, usually hermetic practitioners put alchemy in the hermetic trifecta of magic, astrology, and alchemy. And keep in mind there is no fourth one there, because if they added a fourth, they'd actually have to add five. Like the, the alchemy, magic, and astrology things are why Hermes Trismegistus is called Trismegistus in like the old texts. It's because he was the thrice greatest, and he created the three sciences. Reminds me of Baldur's Gate right now. Yeah, so the alchemical stuff is going to be part of mostly hermetic works at that point. Which isn't a bad thing, keep that in mind, but it is like... It in and of itself is kind of interesting that it is not part of its own thing. It is really just an aspect of other material. Unlo even though it has its own stuff. There are multiple alchemical traditions. Also, keep in mind, we are when I say traditions, we are covering in a we are covering very, very broad strokes. We're talking about very broad strokes that not even people in the traditions would agree with me 100% on everything here. Is it not so? Thou fared, but comest thee not for the grave of my advice true. The legend of our Taurus are none but a fabric. Whatever the Taurus are doing is arguably hermetic, but from a different set of premises to the point where they recognize different elements entirely. Yeah, I mean, Taoists are different. I don't know enough about Taoism to, like, actually talk about it. Okay, I don't... don't remember if I need to be in this covenant for Shiva to show up, for Shiva to be here. I think I do. I don't quite remember. But yeah. Now that we've joined the Cat Covenant. Also, keep in mind, different traditions are going to look at the same thing radically differently. Like, you know, grimoire people might think, ooh, that hurts. Grimoire people might think, oh, it's a cat. It's a, it's a black cat. That's, like, a sign of evil, witchcraft, and that kind of thing. But then you get the Kermit, the uh, Egyptian practitioner, and then they're seeing like, oh, it's a cat. It's a sign of Bast or Sekhmet, respectively. Enchanted Ember. Cool. cool. Now we can go... I forgot this was here, actually. This was not where I thought this would be. Go. And going through... Oh, it's important to note that spirits within different traditions and, like, different, even different grimoires will 
act and be radically different than they are in other grimoires. Like, um, Franz Barden lists the angels of the Shemham Farage as mercurial genie. And some people will evoke them and they will come across as demons to the people evoking them. Which is really weird. Like, that in and of itself is very strange. Because there's no real reason that that should happen, at least on its surface. There is not really a reason why the Shem Ham Farash angels should show up acting like mercurial demons which is how some people have interpreted them after a evocation of the demon or of the angels of the Shemham Farash that are in Barden. That being said, the angels of the Shemham Farash I have an entire video on and uh, they're generally fairly pleasant angels to work with. So I have no idea what happened. I think it might have to do with the sigil that he used, but it's possible. I think that I'm talking about something different. Uh, no, I'm not talking about the time that Poke Runyon got Osei when evoking one of the Mercurial Genie from Franz Barden. Somebody sent me a video the other day about how they evoked one of the Mercurial Genie of Franz Barden and they appeared as a demon. Like, they appeared, like, they showed up basically acting like a demon, like a full-fledged demon. So, that in and of itself is kind of weird. Can I not? Is it like a different... Or wait, no. I think I want this anyways. Yeah, I think I do want that. Yes, I do. What made that happen? I mean, I think it's just a Franz Bar- I, I think it might just be Br Barden's system. I think it is actually Barden's system because Barden- Franz Barden is fairly weird in terms of all of his stuff in terms of what spirits he calls what and what spirits are attributed to what. And, you know, he has the entire listing of the 72 angels of the Shem Ham Farash as his mercurial genie. Beat for beat, by the way, like Angel 2 is the same as in Barden's mercurial genie lineup. But the issue seems to be that the method by which he calls them up, something about that causes them to be adversarial more often than not. I don't entirely know why, but it is a very bizarrely common thing to have happen when working with Franz Barton. It happened to, like... I've heard of multiple people getting, one, a demon of the actual Goetia, which in the case of Poke Runyon, and two, somebody getting the spirit, but they appeared as a demon. Which is really strange. I think some Bardonians imagine that Franz Barden put traps in the system to prevent you from skipping steps, so if you haven't finished up on step 8, then his evocation buck throws traps at you. I mean, that doesn't make sense, though. Because that doesn't explain why you could go to the Venerian spirits in Barden and get perfectly serviceable results 
and then you go to the mercurial genie section and then get demons. That doesn't... That doesn't compute to me. I don't, I don't know about that one. I find that one a little bit suspicious. A little bit suspicious. A little bit suspect. A little bit suspect. Um... Actually, yeah, I, I'm just gonna have a phone. I don't. I don't wanna ride the elevator. Yeah, so Franz Barden is is a weird, weird guy. Um So what are some of the limits between models of magic like energy versus spirit, or can you pretty much do the same operations with either either model? Uh, spirits are allowed to break causality much more readily than the psych paradigm allows. The psych paradigm is more easy to understand for a majority of people. Like, you get, if you're, it's basically weaponized confirmation bias is the psych paradigm. That, that, that is actually what that is. But... When it comes to dealing with the energy model, it's all dependent on what kind of energy you're using, how much of the energy you have, how much you've gathered, what methods you've gathered, and it goes from there. Keep in mind all of the like different models of how magic works are going to have very similar outcomes for the most part. The only difference is that if a spirit is really powerful and really wants to fuck with you, you will know. Because spirits don't have to... Spirits do not have to make things rational. They can just do things. There is a great story by Joe March, also known as, uh, by his former handle, Psycho Sorcerer, about how... He did a working, or did a magical rite involving, I believe it was Tiamat. And he ended up having a situation occur where he was doing a rite involving Tiamat. And then Tiamat moved all of the furniture in his living room, if I remember correctly. Which scared the crap out of him because he heard nothing during the operation, and he walks out and his living room is completely rearranged. Completely. And I'm going to assume the man knows what his living room looks like. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that spirits are allowed to get away with. They don't need to pretend to make things logical because, oh, it's psych paradigm, it's all in your head, haha. -ha. Like, the spirit paradigm is like, no, spirits are real. They do not care if you believe in them. And if you don't believe in them and you ask for confirmation, they will help you. They will confirm. So that is the major difference. The energy model is mostly good at affecting events, though. Like, if you have the energy... Oh, that's creepy. Yeah, that is creepy. Um, it is a creepy story that happened to that guy. But... Also, um, the energy model seems to be really good at manipulating things that are occurring in the moment, in my opinion. Like, if you project a certain kind of energy at something, things will happen. Like, if you, present, if you project certain kinds of magical energy at people, they will be affected by it. Unless they are, like, picking up on it and resisting it, they will be aware as weird as that sounds. Okay. It is now time to go fight one Mr. Havel T. Rock. I don't... I've not done this as a sorcerer, so I might have chronic skill issue. We will find out.
You've got to be kidding me. Oh, uh, why did you... Why did they get... Why do they get to break the law of reality? I mean, they get to break the laws of reality because they're not bound by the physical. Also, they can manipulate you... Very easily. Like, they are able to manipulate events and your understanding of events quite easily compared to other things. Sounds like Tiamat did not mind it's not being believed in and rather annoying, annoyed by it. I mean, I forget exact. I think he wanted proof that they were who they said they were, and they just kind of laughed. And, um, you know, when something starts laughing, depending on the kind of laugh it is, you, you have either fucked up or you have gotten a critical success and you've rolled again and you've gotten another critical success. And either way, something usually not bad, but interesting is going to happen. He wanted evidence that it wasn't all in his head. Well, he fucking got it. He fucking got it. And that is one of the coolest stories. So, um, yeah. Proof. I'll show you proof. Yeah, really. That is what happened. Yeah. The Tiamat story from Joe March is really interesting because it shows that... It shows that the psych paradigm really doesn't have answers for how that works, and I believe he basically just said, it's all crazy. Did they do this without human direction? Do our actions ever interfere with their own personal operations? I mean, that's a, that's a difficult question, because sometimes, like, a spirit is going to show up, right? And if a spirit shows up wanting something, usually they want it for a good reason. But that doesn't mean that we're like, you know, if the spirit is powerful, like the goddess Akate, if the goddess Akate wants to show up and like put you on a job, she will. Now you can reject, but she she knows if you're going to reject and she knows how you're going to react because that's kind of her job but as far as Tiamat moving all of the furniture in this guy's house yeah no I don't I don't know what to make of that honestly it's very bizarre that that happened the way it did well that it allegedly did because never had a goddess move all the furniture in my house. I say that like I'm, like, jealous or something, but, you know, no, I, I just haven't. That isn't exactly a thing that I've had happen to me, and I'm... Pretty sure I'd be too weirded out for it to... be useful for them. Which is funny because a year or two later he stopped believing again, but I get the impression that he is having memory problems. I mean, that is weird. I don't know how you're able to not believe in magic after something like that. That's just weird to me. I have never had the gumption to call on spirits like Tiamat or aspects of common deities. I mean, some are okay. Some, some deities are pretty chill. Some are Tiamat moving all the furniture in your house. Which, you know what? He, he got what he asked for. 
memory modification, Dave. He deleted his videos or something. I forgot how it happened. He deleted his videos. I think because he wanted to, like, just kind of disappear from the internet for a while. Like, at least the occult internet for a while. Which, like, I get that. The occult internet is... significantly weirder than people realize a lot of the time. Especially being, like, a person who makes effectively content for the whole internet. Now, why can't I get my money magic to work instantly? Well, now. Uh, if you pray hard enough, it will work same day. I've had that happen. Is that gonna... Come on, where's the bow? Problem solved. Anyways. So, yeah, you're going to have... Also, for those of you having problems with money magic, do a road opener. Random question, do you believe you're a magician in a past life? I don't believe that past lives are important, and I don't really care about them. Maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. Probably not. Like, statistically, no. It's possible that this is my first life. Anyone ever think of that? What if you don't have any past lives? Does anyone ever think of that? No. No one ever thinks of that. I pray for like 30 minutes and give up. I want to carve out time, get good incense and commit. Uh, if you are not using candles, that might be a problem. If you're using, if you're just doing prayer and you're not doing like candles and stuff, I highly recommend you use candles because candles help the magic go a lot smoother because of the presence of fire. There is your tip of the day. Amongst, like, all the other tips of the day that I'll be giving out for the rest of this live stream. Oh, boy. Pray longer, make your magic stronger. Keep in mind, there is some credence to if you're having problems with money magic and you just start believing that your money magic won't work... You might be accidentally doing ma doing magic to make your magic fail. The Taoists think of that, lol. There is a Chinese astrology method for determining how old your soul is. I forget what it gave me, but I am one of the extremes, either new soul or an ancient one. This just reminds me of that one meme I see floating around a cult social media every now and again of like, I don't trust old souls. Why haven't you escaped Samsara yet? I always think that one's pretty good. That one's always a good one for me. Right up there along the, uh, you can buy somebody's soul and that's like, not the important part. Remember that that's bound to Samsara that has to reincarnate. You never get off the wild ride. And have shit in Samsara. Anyways. There's always like a case where whenever I say something, the Taoists will like have thought about that. Right? Bodhisattva reasons. Like there's there's always a problem where I can like make a joke and then it turns out that the Taoists have already thought of it. And it's like a well-known problem 
in Taoist thought. Like, I made a joke about how there was probably, like, an entire group of Taoists who fucked up their cultivation methods, and then from there they ended up spontaneously combusting, and then came back in the form of ghosts to teach people. And, uh, turns out I was accidentally proven correct. Because I have been cursed with the gift of a prophet... Cursed with the gift of prophecy by Apollo. But only for jokes. Only I'm only allowed to predict things if they're jokes or if they're really, really funny. Okay, cool. It is here. Also, in case you're wondering, we are doing the DLC before we do any of the Lord Souls. So make of that what you will. Not even Dave believes his prophecies. I, I get proven correct in the worst ways possible. Because it's like, look, I don't... I don't believe that, like, there was an entire group of Taoist philosophers who ended up spontaneously combusting and then coming back to reignite their sect in using, um, what's it called? Cool. There we go. We saved Dusk. Now we can go back to the archives, get the thing for the DLC, do the DLC, and go from there. So, yeah. Um, I don't know what the hell the problem is with a lot of Taoist stuff, but it sounds, it sounds as absurd as people want... It sounds as absurd as people want magic in the West to be. Because a lot of magic in the West is like, you know, prayer. It's mostly prayer. But in Taoist stuff, it's like, cultivate your body, use your body as the alchemical vessel, and if you screw up, you will literally spontaneously combust. And, like, that is a warning that they will occasionally give of, like, don't spontaneously combust. And it's like, what do you mean by this? What do you mean? What do you mean, don't spontaneously combust? This is some of the warnings you get in, um, cultivation. And also, no, I don't believe my prophecies. That being said, I do believe the one that I put up in the Patreon exclusive about uh, Elon Musk and uh, the platform formerly known as Twitter. That one I do kind of believe in. I kind of believe that one. As weird as that sounds. As weird as it sounds that I did a Patreon exclusive about the platform formerly known as Twitter. But it's a little bit of a sequel. Before most of you guys were watching, I did a video about Zuckerberg as well. Couldn't that be a Taoist blind to keep others out? You would think, but it happens in so much. It happens so frequently that I'm not entirely sure that it's actually a blind. <laughs> and I think that they actually have, like, the veil gets thin... Their chi is all elementally charged with fire, and then they turn into a star. That is to say, a fireball. So, I don't know what is going on with the Taoist practitioners, but whatever they're having, I want some of that, please. What about the tradition of Shadow Wizard Money Gang? Uh, the, the, the problem is that we love casting spells. And we're brought to you by the Shadow Government. As soon as they legalize nuclear bombs, we will be unstoppable. But until then, uh... Yep, yeah, nope, that is the limits of Shadow Wizard Money Gang. 
I, I love Shadow Wizard Money Gang, like, as a meme. I'm so happy that that is a thing. It's goofy, but I, I, I like the aesthetic of old robed wizards. Like, I like the aesthetic of Shadow Wizard Money Gang. Sh Shadow Wizard Money Gang has the same problem as the towers due to the nuclear bombs. <laughs> Indeed. Who oh, no. Who oh, no. Psionic powers, they a thing? I mean, when you develop good meditation practices, you learn that psionic powers don't need to be cultivated as much as people say they do. Like, if you get a good meditation practice, you can just read people's minds and cheat at cards. I've done it before. My friends don't like playing blackjack with me anymore. So if anyone would like to play blackjack, I would absolutely love uh, nude blackjack partners to... New blackjack playing group with. Half joking. Uh, not about cheating at cards using magic, though. Funny enough. And when I say I, I uh, cheated at blackjack, I called the entire hand and what everyone had, including the final hand. Like, the final result. There we go. Psionics is what happens when people who don't know anything about magic trip over energy work without knowing it has a history and proceed to conceptualize it as psi power. Used to be a site called Psypog that had training material for psionics. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, I believe it. I just do. Did it perish? Cool. I don't like the back and forth you need to do for this DLC, like to start this DLC, but it is a good DLC. So. Yeah, psionics. It Psionics is basically like low tier energy work and it's like low tier energy work mixed with people who don't understand and look into the history of it. Same with remote viewing. The only difference is that is supposedly like military based. Which is um interesting remote viewing is very interesting it's basically like a good way to look at it is remote viewing is what happens when mundane people who are not really interested in magic get their hands on scrying that's a good way to put it i think Because it really is just... Nice. Like, remote viewing is scrying for the mundane people who don't care about the magical part of magic and the military because it was developed during the Cold War. Have y'all ever seen the military documents explaining what magic is? Like, have y'all ever seen that or no? Because that is a wild thing. He wants to play Cyball. There used to be, like, a little toy that was, um... They marketed it as, sci like, Psychic Power Trainer. But what it was, is it was like a headband, and it controlled a fan, and you would, like, direct a ball through it. And I thought that was the coolest thing, and now I'm a wizard. Like, now I'm actually a fucking wizard who does that. Uh, you say that, but they called energy work exercises involving 
a ball of energy in your hand, cyballs. I think that's just like the common term for it now, right? Like, I think everyone just calls it cyballs. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, the military released unclassified documents with a standard black pen, of course, of course. And these documents were... Basically, the documents that the military released were that they had created a program called... I forget what it was called, but the goal of it was to remotely see... Have people remotely see and get classified information. The other thing they did was they came up with a a practice that they call patterning, which is you lay out a mental impression of the world and then the world will shift to take on that patterning. So the military knows what uh what magic is. It's it's declassified. It's more de magic is more confirmed by the military than aliens are right now. I want y'all to think about that. Magic is more confirmed by the military than aliens right now. Because you could argue that they just found Laika, the Russian space dog, and that's that's what happened. Rest in peace, doggo. But we know that the military is like, yeah, here's how you do fucking magic in like a military, like in classified ease. But it's still the men who could stare at goats. Yeah, that movie, basically. It was actually the CIA, not the military, if I remember correctly. Remember, kids, if you think the government wouldn't do that. Oh, yes, they would. Ow. The Wizard Money Game, brought to you by the Feds. Shadow Wizard Money Gang, brought to you by the CIA. Stargate Project was the name. Yeah, no, that... Uh, if you've ever looked into... Like, if you've ever looked into remote viewing and looked into the Stargate Project, um... You're in for a wild ride, because that is really the, uh... Yeah, I don't know how to really explain that other than... They literally created a scrying curriculum in order to spy on the Russians. The fact that that was a thing, that they declassified that, we we have those. The people went on to go on to teach the remote viewing stuff. We, we know that. That is wild to me. Like, I was actually uh, taught how to do remote viewing at one point, so. Can't help but wonder if the military has a magic we weapon of mass destruction of sorts? Was that with Ingo Swan, the remote viewer? Yeah, that was with Ingo Swan. Um, I've actually, I've actually, I'm not gonna name them, but I have actually, like, taken remote viewing classes. 
And this was years before I was into... Like, this was years before I was like a proper initiated wizard, I guess. But... Yeah, no, no, no. That, that stuff is just scrying. Straight up, just just scrying. Is remote viewing and clairvoyance the same thing? What rituals help build that ability? Meditation. Like, unironically, just do meditation. You don't need to do rituals to, like, develop remote viewing and clairvoyance. Like, half of it... They begin by having you meditate. Now, clairvoyance will naturally develop as long as you are doing steady meditation. Like... The quote, quote, psychic powers you get from occultism. I'm going to face the camera for this. The quote, quote, psychic powers you get from occultism, you get mostly as a byproduct of meditation. And if you just meditate for enough, you will get those abilities. You don't really need to force them. Wizards be calling in airstrikes. I have scried the enemy position, Sergeant. I suggest doing those exercises which which uh, improved scrying. Benjamin Rowe wrote a short guide to this sort of thing. Yeah, that, that really is all you need. Benjamin Rowe's guide is really all you need on scrying. At some point, I'll do a scrying video, but, like, that is going to be, like, a, a subscriber milestone at this point. Because Benjamin Rowe basically wrote the perfect one, in my opinion. Which you can probably find online. I noticed in my first three months of it, it would feel like a mouse cursor clicking on something significant. Thanks. Yeah, it, it's different for everyone. Like... There's no one... There is no one way that everyone gets downloads or pings, really. It's all different and unique to everyone. This might be a sensitive question. Will you or have you ever asked a spirit if it had a piece of advice to give us on YouTube? Um, I mean, if my comment section is any indication, uh, half of y'all end up with synchronicities whenever I fucking upload or if I upload late, it's like the perfect time. So not directly. Not directly. I have not asked, like, is there something my audience needs to know? Like, I'm not a YouTube terror reader. I don't, I don't need to ask those kind of questions. If Spirit wants to have me do a message, they will have me make the video in the first place. Spirit, God, whatever you want to call it. If I remember correctly, you don't like the psychological ma model of magic. Can you elaborate? Yeah, I don't like it because it's, um... Well, one, it is too human-centric. And I do not mean that in a good way. I mean that in the, uh, humans are the only thing that matter. And I being a person who works with spirits, can say that it sure as hell looks like there's more than just people helping us with magic. So 
So I don't like the psychological model because of that. That being said, I know a lot of people do like the psychological model of magic, but, and I think that the psychological model of magic is a good tool to get people into magic. A good tool to get people into magic. Uh, will you make a video talking about the kings? Which kings? I I think you mentioned them in your old videos, never fleshed it out. Uh, depends on the kings. Depends on the kings. If you're talking about the elemental kings, uh, probably at some point. Just hasn't really, you know, I gotta... I gotta talk to him again. If I talk to a spirit before I make a video on it, I want to, like, talk to them and make sure that they're cool. And then, if I do make a video on the kings, I can be like... Patreon exclusive version. Hey, kings, what's the magic I should give to my patrons or something? The elemental kings? Yeah, yeah, no. Um, that's what I thought. Yeah, so the, th the problem with the kings is that I need to, like, call them up. So it's more of a case of I just need to, like, call them up again. But in terms of, like... Sorry about that. In terms of, like... Am I going to talk about them in, in the future? At some point, I will, but that time is not today, and that time is not uh, any time for the next, like, couple of months. It will happen, though. Don't worry. It will happen. Damn, Dave, that's cool. Yeah, no, um... Basically, the the way it would the way it will work is if I do a video talking about a spirit, I have recently called them up. I'm not going to like just talk about a spirit unless I'm talking about an experience I had. I'm not going to talk about a spirit on the channel or on the Patreon without having called them up. And I, like I've gotten a couple requests to do. Um, I've gotten a couple of requests to do individual spirits, and I just, I need to call them. That's the issue. I need to call them and, like, actually talk to them, actually make sure I know what their whole deal is and what they're about before I just make a video being like, yeah, um, this particular demon of hell is really cool, guys. Because I'm not EA Quetting or somebody who is capable of just doing that with LHP spirits, specifically. Like that's... For those of you wondering, man, he talks about working with spirits a lot, but he doesn't really talk about, like, actual spirits specifically. Yeah, that's why. I, I don't want to do that until I've actually, like, re-talked to the spirit and made sure that I'm not spilling any beans that I shouldn't be spilling. So what is the power scale between pagan gods and angels? Uh, more or less equal, but... It depends on the pagan gods, actually. Um, some pagan gods lower, some pagan gods higher. It really depends on the pagan gods. But regardless, depending on the pagan god, depending on circumstance... I rolled. Come on. Come on. What is it, in fucking rage mode like a monster hunter? What the hell? Yeah, so, depending on the pagan god, if you talk to, like, really obscure pagan gods from the past, it will appear like they're more powerful because they are more readily willing to help you. Okay. 
So there's there's a weird rule where the less people calling up a spirit, the more powerful that spirit is allowed to act. Or a, that seems to be the rule. I'm not fully sure how accurate that is, but that definitely seems to be the rule. So I understand it. Why is that? Because there's let, um... Figure that every spirit has a certain amount of bandwidth. And they don't need to multitask if one person is the only person calling them up. They can just use all their bandwidth to, one, exist, and two, do what they're asking. They don't need to multitask. Try to put your all into a dozen different things. Yeah, no, that's... It really is the case of uh, you can half-ass two dozen things or you can whole-ass one thing. Literally talked about that earlier today, actually. Funny enough. Do these pagan gods also have angels? Uh, that's a good question. According to the PGM, yes. Because... And keep in mind, for those of you who are like, oh, working with angels, or working with uh, gods is weird. I don't want to work with gods. Uh, you are more than welcome to just conceptualize them the way I did for multiple years as the angels of the sphere of Netzach, the Elohim, or the gods. So the pagan go come on. Like the PGMs, I believe straight up calls Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael servants of Helios. Or just angels as understood by different cultures. Um I mean, like if you read about pagan gods, you'll find that they have servants. Gets more interesting than that. Due to certain syncretisms, the angels we already know of sometimes are understood as angels of Helios. Right, exactly. Which is just... It's just really weird. Come on. I'm not dying now. There we go. Boss down. Cool. 
We have begun the DLC. Cool. Because doesn't the Olympic Olympic spirits also govern of other spirits? I mean, there's functionally infinite number of spirits. That's the problem. Like, there's more than just there's more than just angels, um, planet planetary spirits, and the like. There are also like God. There's so many of them. Um. There are more spirits that we don't have. There are more spirits than we have names. There is not enough paper in all of the world to cover the amount of spirits there are that we just haven't cataloged yet. So make of that what you will, but generally speaking, We don't have all of the details. Oh, this is where I buy gold pine. Be useful if. Where do they emerge from? Um, so there are two types of that. That's a good question. The answer is they emerge from the fact that they already exist. And they exist in the various higher realms, and they exist in the various layers of the astral plane. They are very much not going to be, you know, they're going to exist in the astral plane, they're going to exist in the higher realms. It's not, it's just that we don't know who they are because we haven't talked to them. Now, there are various other planes where we just don't talk to the spirits there for various reasons. It's possible that, um, you know, that there, is an, it, there is a realm where only Cthulhu-style monsters live. And we don't talk to them. Why don't we talk to them? Why would you want to talk to Cthulhu Mythos-style monsters? You wouldn't. Unless you're really into... The old gods, in which case Cthulhu Photogon. But I'm willing to bet that most people don't really want to do that with the old gods. By the old gods, I mean like the Lovecraftian old gods, not the actual old gods who are like Zeus and things. Or the older gods, which are like the pre Canaanite gods, but yeah. Sometimes, like, if if you end up interacting with a spirit and that spirit isn't, like, a big-named one, um, newsflash, some of those spirits are fucking weird. And it's not that they're weird for, like, a malicious reason. They're just weird because they're not used to dealing with people. What about the big G... The, the one true god or the over god, what's the lore? What's the, the I mean, that's, that's the mystery, dude. I can't give up the mystery. My channel would be dead. <laughs> no, uh, the, the whole lore there is that they are the hermetic monad, in my opinion. Uh, go, and, and everything is an emanation out of that hermetic monad. For more information on that, go read the Corpus Hermeticum. Uh, yeah, so, go read the Corpus Hermeticum for that. Because I'm of the opinion that the, like, there is a one true monad source creator, but he's mostly hands-off, and everything else is an emanation of that. And that's what we are aspiring to holiness for. We are trying to be sources of good in the world. We're trying to, uh, as the internet has kindly and very succinctly put it, maximize good things, minimize bad things. That is the ambitions of the modern magician. Maximize good things. Minimize the bad things in the world, as it were. What those look like is different to every person, but, you know, we, we try to be... 
The Corpus Hermeticum is such a Shadow Wizard money gang name, at least the way you said it. Oh, the Corpus Hermeticum? Yeah, no, that, like... The Corpus Hermeticum is really, like, actually good. It is, um... The, the like, rough translation of what that book is... Is pretty, pretty crap, but... You know, just saying Corpus Hermeticum is really fun. So, it's very, very Shadow Wizard Money Gang. In that regard. We are in the woods. Okay, cool. Yep. So, which translation do you prefer? Um, so I've read the Corp, uh, I think it's the Copenhagen one. That's the one I prefer. But there's also a, a wonderful thing of pro tip. If you're an occultist and you've read a book multiple times and you want to reread it, for various reasons, there are people who are on the internet who have made recordings of those in audiobook format. And so what I will usually do nowadays is I will read the Copenhaver version or I will go through and I will listen to an audiobook that somebody has kindly put up on YouTube of them reading the Corpus Hermeticum out loud and they all, occasionally, uh, my, forget what the guy's name is, um, but he, he does a really, like, mysterious kind of voiceover to it. And he will occasionally, like, say notes over top. And the notes will be like, I mean, it makes sense, but it doesn't. It's really weird. And it, I, I love those kind of commentary. I love that kind of commentary of like, yeah, that does make sense, but it doesn't. It, like does and does not make sense. That's, you know, I, I like that kind of stuff. I'd rather avoid calling on spirits that predate the dinosaurs if Enochian spirits are hard to understand. I can only imagine what a Cthulhu being would say. Um, basically, if they developed before the advent of social conventions and like social hierarchies then I would avoid them what is your opinion on the book of Oberon I think the book of Oberon is very good I've practiced some stuff out of it and it seems to work fairly nice so that is my opinion of the book of Oberon good book um, I'm still trying to find test experiments like people who I can rope into doing experiments from the Book of Oberon, because there are some weird rituals in there that uh, I'm not going to... F I'm not going to mention them. Not because I don't want to, but because of YouTube. Uh, there are some... things in the Book of Oberon that I legitimately am so curious about, I want somebody to test them and see what the fuck it means. I imagine that's how, that would be like, do you want psychic damage? Because that's how you get psychic damage. Yeah, really. You want psychic damage? That's That really is how you get psychic damage. Just, just straight up. Just call up things earlier than the dinosaurs. Calling up things earlier than the dinosaurs is a uh, very surefire way to get yourself screwed over. In terms of... Um, is this where we get the... Yep. Okay, cool. I love that introduction. That introduction for 
what is effectively the final boss of Dark Souls 1 is very good. And that is the arena you fight him in. Which is just good level design, for those of you wondering. Yep, okay, cool. I've answered the questions about uh, the best book, Corpus Hermeticum. Best book, Corpus Hermeticum. Um, in case you're wondering, in case... Does anyone want more book reviews? Like, we're doing... I, I did a book review of Damien Eccles' High Magic, which, uh, spoilers, I did review positively. It's on the Patreon already. Um, but it is a fascinating book. I think you mentioned this before, but what would you say are the limitations of ATR or folk traditions? Uh, that is a good question. And uh, from what I've gathered from the publicly available literature on ATRs, they are very grounded. Like, as weird as this sounds, they are the most grounded magical traditions. As weird as that sounds. Buck reviews would be great. Yeah, um, I'm planning on doing, uh, it, planning on doing at least two book reviews this month. Uh, one of them is going to be, uh, spoilers, four books, if I can get it, if I can get it all situated. Uh, no points for guessing what that four book review is going to be. But yeah, there there is a video on the Patreon. I put that up. That'll be up uh I think not this month, but next month. Maybe? It might be next month. Yeah. I think I think it's up next month. Um cuz I've I've got such a backlog. It's on High Magic by Damien Eccles, for those of you who have not read that already. His books are... It's, it's very interesting. Because... It, it, it really does... I, I, I mean this in the best possible way. It feels like somebody cut down and cut out all of the crap from ceremonial magic. And grounded in terms of philosophy. Uh, ATRs are grounded and practice. Like, ATRs are grounded in terms of theory and pra like practice. In terms of magic and theory and practice, they are grounded traditions. I think I remember somebody talked about the methods to become a D&D &D lich during the Parasite podcast, and I can't help but think how effectively turning... how you're effectively turning yourself into a spiritual parasite. I mean, yeah, that really does... Uh, that really is the case. Like, that really is what that would be in that regard. I will say, um, in terms of, th this is not related to actual magic, but, uh, if you guys want to see a modern day, like, what a piece of creative, like, a piece of creative vision with every single person putting their heart and soul into it looks like, go play Baldur's Gate 3. In. It's uh, it's taking over my sleep says schedule. But uh, that being said, the videos are coming out still. Uh, okay, yeah. There will be more book. There will be more book reviews of both cult fiction and of occult literature. I'm. Hoping, and when I say occult literature, I mean like actual occultism, not like fucking D and D Baldur's Gate. I'm not gonna. Hmm. So what is the funniest spell in real occultism? The flashy check this out spell, i.e. fireball. Uh, I 
The ones that work instantaneously are usually my favorites. Okay, I just lost 20,000 souls. Well, that's what I get for rushing. Anyways. Yeah, I find that the uh, the spells that you do in real occultism that work the best are, or the the ones that are the most interesting are the ones who, where you get like evocations and then you get a big flashy result because the spirit did exactly what you want. Like you can use spirits to manipulate the stock market. Same day. Like, you can use spirits for that, and it's pretty good when that happens, if you're invested in the stock market or you're waiting for it to go down, but make sure you use a spirit who can also take it back up. It's actually a good idea. So... I'm trying to think of, like, what the best example of, like, a really good flashy spell is. Um, oh, I know that there, there's, like, a, there's, like, a modern spell that everyone seems to keep doing. Uh, which, what do I use? Which evocations? Or, like, which, which spirits do I use to manipulate the stock market? Is that, is that what we're asking right now? Did I, did I spill the beans uh, on the fact that you can do that? And then people were like, wait, you can do that? And whoops, my bad. Wasn't supposed to do that. I apologize. Uh, sorry, taking the money part of Shadow Wizard Money Gang. A little bit, a little bit serious there. Um, no, but uh, it, usually uh, it, it depends on the situation. Um, typically, I will use the Agrippa Spirit of Jupiter for that. He's really good at it. So pray for a spirit to resurrect my crypto portfolio. Hey, dude, uh, I did this and then XRP won their lawsuit. So I'm not saying that you can thank me for XRP, like, winning their lawsuit. But I am saying the day I did the operation, XRP fucking skyrocketed. So, you know... And yes, that that is actually a thing that happened. I have I, I hate that. What's funny about that story is um the first thing I said was not thank you. I said, you motherfucker, I said not stocks. Or I, I said like, very specific methods, and then he was, like, the spirit was just like, money machine go burr, and I was like, fuck you, god damn it. So. So, we will see what that does. Um, we, we will see how that result goes, but, uh. Yeah, that being said, uh, Spirits giving you money. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of money magic. Also, don't invest in crypto ever again. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> crypto has now been tainted by uh, crypto bros as being a magical parasite on your money. As funny as that sounds, because like when it when it first started, it was like, oh, it's so hopeful. But now it's like, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Wait, did the spirit actually meme you? Yes, the spirit fucking memed me! Like, I was so pissed by that. That is, like, actually... This is actually a thing that happened. Hey, man. God is the one who lets me command the spirits. The spirits are allowed to meme me if it's a benefit. I'm not gonna fucking beat me. I... The worst part was, I said something to the effect of, and I want dramatic b results by the end of the day. I got instant fuck. This is my Joe March story. I learned my crypto lesson at least. At least I got 6k. Yeah, yeah, basically that's what you want to do.
Oh boy. So yeah, make of that what you will, but uh the long and the short of that is I got memed on by spirits, and uh We will see. We will see. I did I literally asked for it. You are correct, sir. I quite literally asked for it. Your Joe March story. Yeah, this is my Joe March story. Fortunately, it was like, uh... Darn, I was AFK and I missed it. Uh, long and the short of it was I called up the Agrippa Damon of Jupiter and I asked for instant results and I got uh, XRP won its lawsuit, went back on Coinbase, and, like, shot up over 100%, and I died. Word your wish carefully. Well, it was more... Well, I said while well, blessing all involved, right? So, basically, apparently that was the easiest way to bless all involved. So, um, yeah, think of that what you will. Uh, I want to at least kill Artorius, and then we'll call it... That's the goal for this stream. The The goal is kill Knight Artorius. So yeah, that, that is my Joe March story. Is uh, Long and short of it is I, I, I asked for money. I got the... Oh, God damn it. Okay. Okay, let's try something a little bit different. Uh, let's go with Great Soul Arrow. Now I have more shots in my magical Glock. Uh, cool. Do you know any decent books for to get into Hermetic Alchemy? No. Uh, not specifically Hermetic Alchemy. That being said, okay, this goes for everyone. If you want a book on a topic, if it is an old topic, go look up Esoterica. Dr. Justin Sledge has wonderful videos. And if you watch his videos, you will be able to read the books that he recommends or like he cites or says that people cite, and use those. Can you give us some pr some good practical tips and good practices that you haven't talked about? Depends on what depends on what you're asking. Because the answer to that question is yes, but one, uh, that is my plan for future videos is talk about practical stuff and two i do those in the occultic manuals three depends on what you're talking about because i am sworn to secrecy on certain topics and i just can't fucking talk about certain things like like certain things i'm just not allowed to speak about because like i am i am i am sworn to secrecy by the shadow wizard money gang as it were Like, there are some topics that are just forbidden for me to talk about. One of our associates recommends A Real Alchemy by Robert Bartlett. I do recommend Robert Bartlett. That's a very good one. Such as the specific identity of the associates. Yes, we, I cannot reveal my associates. The shadow government got amateur. No, it's more like, um... It's more like I can't talk about stuff because, like, if I talk about it, I'm breaking oaths, and the oaths are, like, important. So, yeah. 
Like, I got some weird shit I can talk about, or I can't talk about. But if I can talk about it, it's like... It's, it's, it's kind of funny you ask that, though. Because, like, I, I'm thinking about it real quick. This is, like, the one channel that I know of that talks about practical occultism from, like, a mechanical perspective. Very few channels do this. So when I'm talking about stuff, it's already, like, a two out of five in terms of, like, the difficulty to replicate. Because I'm expecting y'all are meditating, you're doing your due diligence, you're, you're doing your reps, you're doing your LBRPs, your middle pillars daily. You're doing your spiritual exercise. I'm expecting that from my audience. Uh, I know that not everyone is, but I'm okay with that as long as, you know, you're getting something out of the videos. I, I don't really care. Uh, I, as long as you're getting something out of it. Some of it is along the lines of you're not allowed to use this method of astral invisibility if you haven't evoked the spirit type stuff. Yeah, no. Like, I'm not the Gallery of Magic. Perhaps we need a reminder on why secrets are important in magic. Dave, would you be so kind? That I can fucking talk about. So, you want to know how to get the most out of your evocation reports? Step one, you write preliminary questions. Step two, you call up the spirit. You do the spirit tests. You then proceed to do all of your questions, right? Uh, you do all of your questions and then, uh, I currently don't have a Discord, I'm working on it. There's some one thing I gotta solve with Patreon before I do that, cause I just wanna like, I gotta contact Patreon support about it before I do like a Patreon Discord, um, which I'll have open roughly, but I just need to, I need to do some things before I get that all set up. That's that's the issue here. But, um, yeah. So, you do for... I don't have a good spot yet for my LBRPs. Do them mentally. It's, it's You can just do mental LBRPs. Better than not doing them at all. Even if you're just doing the LBRP in your head, it's better than just not doing it at all. You can do it quiet and all that kinds of stuff. I wouldn't do it in the bathroom just because that's poor taste, but, you know. Do it where you can. Um, I don't have a good spot for my help here. Yeah, okay, covered. Uh, you probably have talked about this, but we are going... Uh, are we going to have a Discord? Um, yeah, so if you're asking about, like, a Patreon Discord, because I think you were on my Patreon, uh, like, four or five people... If you had asked me last month, like, this, ta this time last month, I would have said probably not. But at this point, there will most likely be a patron, at least a patron Discord in the next few months. Don't quote me on this month, because my, I'll be honest, um, my productivity this month is garbage. Uh, my productivity this month in terms of videos is garbage. Like, patrons are still getting, like, their three videos a month, uh, three to four videos a month. Basically, the only day I take off for Patreon exclusive content is, um... The first Thursday of the month, I don't upload a Patreon exclusive. Just because I like that as, a, like, a good day off type thing. Um, I'll switch that around when Thanksgiving comes. We'll figure it out then. We'll play it by ear. But... Yeah, so... The thing is... If you would ask me a couple... Like, if you would ask me this time last month... I would have said, probably not. There's not going to be, like, a Discord. I'm not going to make a Discord. But... The Patreon has grown so much to where, like, it might just be, like, I have a lot of people asking me questions in DMs, so it might just be better if I just open a fucking Discord so y'all can ask me in DM, or in the Patreon, like, in the Discord. So, I figured that out, but at the moment, uh, that's not going to be this month, most likely. It'll probably be at some point in the future. I just... Like I said, there's a lot going on this month, like, um, and my attention is split between a lot of different things. 
like a lot of different things, unfortunately. So. Make of that what you will. Uh, I was a patron, but my money situation got a little bit curvy this month. Okay. It's totally fine, dude. Yeah. Like, I get it. I get it. I fully understand. People have problems. It's part of the reason I do money spells, is to help both myself and people with their money problems. Because uh, I, I, fun, fun fact about uh, me, uh, I actually do, I have actually done money spells for other people before, and they work very, really well. But uh, I find that people, like when you do money spells for other people, you need to make sure that they actually. You know, are the kind of people who will capitalize on somebody doing a fucking money spell for them. <laughs> as weird as that is. So yeah, make that what you will. But overall, I, I have some goals for the, the channel and for the Patreon. Uh, a Discord is now on that list as this is like the sixth time. It'll probably be open... I'll, I'll do, like, a really shitty thing, and then I'll be like, it'll be open for a couple, of like, a week on the YouTube, and then I'll close the link down. Yeah. I will say, I do genuinely, like, so I, I you know, it, like, it, it's kind of weird. I do genuinely, like, appreciate everyone. Who watches my content and and i am and i know a lot of you are on my patreon already but i uh definitely want to do some things to like if y'all need fun fact about anyone who is already on my patreon dm me on patreon if you want an exclusive video i've done that for people not the people who would pull who would quit their job if they won the lottery yeah exactly i can't fucking get I have cast money spells for people, and um, it's even worse when their job, like, the problem with their job is not them. Like, the problem in the re- like, they like their job, but their boss is the reason they can't get a raise. Or, like, they like their job, but their job is just a shithole. That kind of thing. I saw somebody posted something, but I didn't get a chance to read it. So you are the quickest person in terms of deleting messages yet. For the one person I saw post and then immediately deleted. That being said, I'm going to take a moment and make sure I'm in live chat mode. Cool, we are in live chat mode. I do like to read all the chat messages. Which is why I die so much in Dark Souls. Um, yeah, so, so for those of you who don't know, I do actually just, like, I just do, like, a lot of stuff that people don't ask about, and somebody asked me about this. I get a lot of, oh, right, this guy is just straight up from Bloodborne, for those of you wondering hmm. why he looks like this. He, he's from Bloodborne. Yes, we are both straight bastards. He sells moss. Good to know. He sells the moss. So long. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of things where it's like I I have goals for the channel. One of which is I want to at some point go over and I guess I'm pitching this on the live stream now and I'm asking if you um, you guys want this. I want to do, like, a spell review style thing where y'all can, like... If you've ever seen, like, people do... <sighs> if you've ever seen, like... Build... Like, build reviews, I guess, or, like, build help... I want to do things where it's like somebody can send me a spell that they're planning on and I can like 
look at it and just make sure that there's no obvious flaws. Like, share it with the community we have built up here. Yeah, no. Um, also, for those of you wondering, if you are struggling to have, like, a temple space, uh, like, if you're struggling with a temple space, you can just do it in your head for, the mo for like, when you're starting out. And I parry you. I can't. That sounds really original. Yeah. Yeah, I basically want to like take in like three or four suggestions. I'll I'll post on Instagram and Patreon when I'm going to do this. Uh Instagram, Patreon, and now the the site formerly known as Twitter. I will be posting on all three of those platforms when I plan on doing this, so y'all can submit in, like, an orderly way. I'll have, like, an orderly way of doing this. Um, but until then, don't fucking submit things to me yet, please. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this. Uh, I don't know if you would know where to submit them. You might just DM them to me on, like, Instagram or something. But... Yeah, so I, I plan on doing, like, that and, like, sharing those. Uh, so don't fucking give me love spells. Don't give me love spells, please, to review. Please. I love this channel. Such good content and really informative blessings. I'm really happy that people are just fucking enjoying the channel. <laughs> I'm really just happy that this is, like, the most unique. This is a weird fucking channel, in my opinion. Like, I, I look at it, and it's, like, not as, I say, doing an occult gaming stream where I'm playing Dark Souls 1 and answering questions about occultism. Yeah. I do have privacy, but not enough for double speaking volume and not being hurt. Yeah, no, um, I find that that is the biggest issue. Because if I am home alone, and I'm doing a ritual, I fucking shout. Like, like you can hear me through the walls. And if I'm saying a god name, it sounds like a train. More content. Yeah, no. That's what the... That, Look, it, for the content addicts who have the money to spare, that's what the Patreon is for, because I'm posting more than just, um... I went ahead last month and posted two video, or technically three videos every week for the people over there on the Patreon, but, um, yeah. And all of those video, like, ma a majority of those videos will be coming over here. Just in turn. Okay, buddy. Right, come on. Okay, that should work. I recently put up a temple space in my basement for this reason. Three concrete walls <laughs> covered by fabric. Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Yeah, like the the whole the whole thing about the channel. It's the weirdest that makes it good. Authenticity. I'll join the Patreon soon, but I'm broke right now. Dude, honestly, like... Okay. Here's what I want every person who can, who can, responsibly to do. If you're watching this. I want y'all to go to... If you're having money problems, do this. I want y'all to go through, go to the money, money spell video... And I want to crowdfund advice on that video because I know a lot of people responded in one of two ways to that video. And I know the thumbnail sucks. I'm, I'll figure it out. I got to work on thumbnails. I'll, I'll fully admit. Go to the Money Magic video, right? Oh, yeah. The, you're getting more content. Don't worry. I'm, you, you're like, I'm content maxing for the people on Patreon, so... Don't worry about that. Eventually, you'll get a Discord, too. Um, but yeah. So, I want to crowdfund advice. Like, if y'all can, 
I don't know what happened with the mic there. If y'all can go ahead and do the money spell that I like custom tailor it however you want from the video that I put up and I'll make a version two, which will be uh, like community edition. We'll call it community edition. Fuck it. Because I do like the community here and I do know that you guys are really good at what you do. And if you can do that, perfect. And just, like, really write down what you do if you're going to submit, like, what you do. Because I want to crowdfund advice on that overall. I thought you could parry this guy. I was told you could parry Artorius. Are his timings just weird? How much stuff can you get away with just by visualizing the circle candles? Uh, okay. You can get away with sigils you should practically do. Hang on. I'm gonna... I need to, like, actually focus on this question. Um, the circle, you can visualize. The candles, you could visualize. As long as it's not electric lights, I think it's fine. Personal, like, if you can get, like, tiny tea lights. That's one of the things I'm, like, really, really, uh, a stickler for. I thought you were weak to magic, too. He is weak to magic, but not enough. Yeah, so, the sigils, um... Sigils, you don't need, like, a physical version of them. Most of the time, I'd say. Most of the time, you don't need, like, physical versions of sigils. You can just make them up. Basically, you the spirits are generally willing to meet you where you're at, as long as they're not things that are called usually, like, demons. Demons will not. Demons will be pissed, and demons will fuck you up if you do that. Which, which is why I should probably not be as nonchalant on the YouTube about things. But Some people use electric candles and a pinch. Would that really suffice? Um, I've had mixed reports on this. I personally am fire sign fire sign fire sign as my great three in astrology so when people say that they're using electric led lights i say that's fucking heresy uh but if that's all you have i would argue that that is better to be a electric candle heretic than to not have anything at all also, fire safety. Yeah, you, you gotta remember fire safety as well. Like, when I say you should have candles, I mean you should have candles and also be doing fire safety. Like, I don't know if you know this, but you should be always doing fire safety. Fire safety is just important. So yeah, make it that what you will. But yeah, um, when it comes to electric light... Candles are... Electric candles are just a decorated light bulb. Yeah, but that's the thing. They're decorated in the shape of a candle. So, I don't know... I genuinely don't know if they're a good idea to use. But as far as I'm concerned, there's much worse things. Cotton robes catch fire very easily. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. I definitely believe that they catch fire much more easily. As nightmarish as that sounds. Blue. Tonight. Chunk. Where do you farm these? <clears throat> Come on. Hang on. Who drops these? Back where I came. 
So long. Do you have the item discovery? Cool, we're going on an adventure! My gut instinct says that they are usable, but you need to leave them on for longer if the intent was offering. I mean, you can offer up the life of the battery in that case, I guess, right? Like, you, you offer up the light of the battery. Might be able to get away with the LEDs that make a fire effect in some diffusers. I mean, maybe. The whole thing is, like, I, I know I'm very much a stickler for this, but I would say experiment. I know people who use electric light candles and they seem to get results and they get very good results. But the thing is, probably in a similar effectiveness as electroplating. I would say, hey, I say to electroplate and then alch like spiritually transmute. I say to go the extra mile when it comes to like electroplating metals. That being said, yeah, you got me on there. You got me there. Um... Oh, no. Usually I'm not using candles for, like, offerings, though. I don't... I don't like using candles for offerings. That being said, I would say that you can offer things... Like, you don't need to offer... You don't need to offer candles. You can offer other things. You don't even need to burn them in most traditions. As weird as that sounds. But I would say that you should definitely be making... You should definitely be mindful at the very least. Definitely be mindful. Okay, cool. So that is my two cents on that. I think I think people have asked that before, but I'm I'm fine with people asking questions multiple times. If people asked only unique questions, we'd run out eventually. So it's totally fine. And yes, at, at some point when enough people are watching the content, we will have like full community sourced stuff. How do you make the overhead candle holder in Kabbalah Magic? Okay, I literally... Okay, you're gonna hate this. Y'all are gonna hate this. I literally took a glass and metal lantern with a metal top screwed in a holder above my <laughs> above my uh, altar setup and put it there. Like the room is well ventilated, but that is what I do. Uh, so, so that's that's how I have it. I have like a fire safety style lantern with candles in it, uh, and the candles are like small candles, so I have no risk of anything in either way. Um, that being said, uh, I I do have it, it. It is fairly. Fairly heavy duty due to the fact that I did have a candle explode in there once. So yeah. I love the idea of offending a spirit because you summon them with an electric tea like Demons hate cheap magic, it seems. Yeah, well... I mean, demons hate low effort magic. That, that seems to be the bigger issue. Demons hate low effort magic is is how I would phrase it. Because I, I definitely understand where they're coming from. That being said, you know, it is what it is.
back in this. Cool. Good. Okay. Yeah, demons hate low effort magic, so make of that what you will. Um, and yeah, so for the overhead candle holder, I literally have like a lamp, like a, a, a candle holding lamp in my altar space for when I do magic. So yeah. And I also, for the side altars, for, for those of you wondering, um, for those of you wondering... For the side tables, if you are doing the Kabbalah magic thing, uh, you can literally just go pick up four cheap side tables. Like, I have four little, fairly cheap side tables that I've used for, like, literally years. Really good for putting your uh, magical tablets on, if you have them. Which, if you're doing the Kabbalah magic thing, you eventually will just kind of the nature of it. Don't try to fight it. You will eventually have the tables. Everyone gets the tables eventually. I took a wrong turn. Cool. Also, I watched the Venus episode and thought the description was similar to a more manevoly benevolent Slanesh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they really kind of are. Well, like, if you think about it, Slanesh is just corrupted Venus, right? I mean, Slanesh is like... the goddess of pleasure, excess, and sensation. And those are all Venerian, Venerian traits. Yeah, I, I use TV dinner tables. I, I, yeah, that's that really is what I did. You did you did significantly less than I did, Adris. I I uh I literally just have like four twenty dollar I have four twenty dollar tables that I have, and that's where I put my Enochian tablets. For the longest time I was also like I did have various um S bottles of spirits holding up my Enochian table of water. <laughs> so, make it that what you will. Was it the best decision? No. Was the bottle blue? Yes. Half of you who are alcohol enjoyers know the brand now. So, yeah, make it that what you will. I need to get myself an HOGD book. They're so just so expensive. Uh, you... I would never condone this. But if you look around the internet, you can probably find them for cheaper than what you're being asked for by your local Amazon dealer. I shouldn't have done that, but whatever. You can probably find them. I don't know where you could find them, but I'm sure that if you look, you can find them. Like how corn is corrupted Mars. Yeah, so corn corn is corrupted Mars. Nurgle is corrupted Saturn. Zinch is corrupted Mercury. Slanesh is corrupted Venus. And the Emperor is corrupted Sun. on account of the fact that in 40k lore he is Jesus Christ. A very distraught, very, very much en enthroned Jesus Christ. Which is probably the best lore that I, uh, I am aware of. Because on top of being an occultist, I am also a gigantic nerd. Which I'm sure no one could guess. So, make that what you will. But yeah. It's kind of interesting how... Um, it's kind of interesting when you, you go through and you like look at things from an occult lens. Just how much you get to... Oh god, please no. Okay, cool. Just how bizarre certain things tend to be 
in terms of you know what just use five we're doing this for item discovery so it's kind of interesting how like one you when you start studying occultism you can like attribute planetary things and the planetary things if it's supposed to be like a divine entity line up too well unfortunately and also a walking embodiment of pride i mean the emperor's problem is that he's a walking embodiment of hubris like he he is hubris incarnate because he didn't think that he would be betrayed by the person literally in front of him. And it took the sacrifice of one of his most beloved children in order for him to be like, okay, I, I fucking, you are beyond redemption. Which is, it's kind of funny. So. I always find that to be kind of a funny, interesting, tragic kind of perspective. When you look at how the Emperor works. Um, okay. Okay. And yes, you can find this pattern repeated in, like, every single good work of fiction. Every good work of fiction, you can see the divine character traits, like, portrayed over and over and over again, and it's really good. But if it's a bad piece of media, you will not. You will... You know, you'll you'll think, oh, it's supposed to be the god of war, and then they're like a farmer. And there will be no explanation for why the god of war is now a farmer. Yep, that well well yeah, that's that kinda is the thing. That kinda is the, the whole thing. Being a nerd and a magician, do you find yourself even trying to replicate spells from your favorite story? No, because I don't mix I don't mix my nerd shit with my magic shit because like you know, I have I have a a level of reverence for the powers that be that are, you know, it keeps me from doing stuff like that. As much as I'm sure some people would love to hear it, uh, I don't mix magic and I don't mix magic and um, fantasy that much. But I know other people do, and so I figure if I'm going to continue doing the occult stuff, I might as well like review some occult fic fiction and that kind of thing. Uh, so that'll be, that's why you get like the, um, that's why you get the, uh, the good occult media video. That's how you get that video. Is me trying to share like what the good occult fiction is. Um, fun fact about that video, by the way, this is like a behind the scenes thing. Uh, you notice that I call it the Vavitch, like instead of the witch. Um, that is actually how IMDB has, like you are forced by IMDB IMDb. IMDb to call it the Vavitch. It will not show you that movie if you don't search with the two V's. So uh, that's a little fun behind the scenes of that video, which is why I, I make that joke in there. Sorry to explain the joke, but that that is just a really funny thing I thought some people would get a kick out of. It's not called the witch, it's called the Vavitch. Oh. 
Ask a chaos magician. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's not my job. That's a uh, I have I have a friend who does that instead. Uh, one of my associates does that and tells me the results. And my response nine times out of ten is, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And then it works, and then we both go, "What the fuck is wrong with this? Why did this work?" And then we have to dissect it, and then. We're like, we should probably just ask somebody why this works. And then it's like, yeah, and then we will, then we set a date for when we should do an operation. And then we'll, we'll figure out that operation in three years. Just, just give me five years. It's perpetually an operation. Well, like it's a, a thing we'll ask about five years from now. And I've been saying that for like three years. So make that what you will. Actually, I'm going to sit at the bonfire real quick and I'm going to check something. Because I want to know... Mm, okay, so... Cool. Yeah, Chaos Magicians, for those of you who don't know, uh, in the 90s decided that they were going to experiment with what is called pop culture magic. Pop culture magic is this wonderful thing where you will try to work with spirits that are not traditionally seen. Uh, and, and, like, when I say not traditionally seen, I mean they are spirits of shit like Daffy Duck, or Scrooge McDuck specifically, Superman, Spock, for logical reasoning, which... Of all the spirits they work with, I think Spock for logical reasoning is probably the one I agree with the most. That being said, they're doing the least logical magical operation in order to do it, so, you know. Make of that what you will. Because that in and of itself is, um... Yeah, yeah. It It's kind of weird. Kind of weird overall. One. Okay, cool. So I think I am doing it right. Yeah. All right, cool. What about Bill Cipher? Uh, and that works. Yeah. So, um. It does apparently work, but it works because the theory that I subscribe to as to why it works is because it works because it's not actually like Goku. If you summon Goku for tr for teaching you how to get stronger, not at like... Goku will not show up as a spirit and be like, here's how you get stronger, yeah. Here's how you get ripped, man. Like, he won't put you through a training arc. That's not how that works. Right? But what he will do... But what Goku will do is he will be a spirit that is assuming the form of Goku in order to show up because you asked for Goku to show up. Because you're a weeb who wants to train like your Dragon Ball character. And in case you're wondering, no, I don't recommend doing that. But you can do it. 
So, so make it that what you will. You, you could theoretically train like Goku from evoking Goku, but I don't. This is why we don't talk to chaos magicians, man. This is why we don't talk about chaos magic, because chaos magic does shit like, like evoke Goku for physical strength. So it's like the idea of servitors being vessels or roles for entities. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Basically, it is... The best theory is that the spirit is not actually the fictional entity, but it is actually a spirit that is taking the guise of that fictional entity in order to have more leeway with how they affect you and how the... How they are able to do magic. Yeah, it is it is an existing spirit adopting the form. It is not... You're not fucking summoning Goku, okay? You're not... It's not actually Goku. I'm sorry to tell you. Goku isn't real. Go, Goku isn't fucking real. Sorry. Rest in peace, Crestfallen Warrior from Dark Souls 1. He doesn't even drop humanity. He is completely hollowed. Kind of shitty. Oh, curses. Cool. Sort of like putting a costume on on a costume for children. Exactly, yeah. That That's what it is. The theories I have are 1. Egregores, 2. Cosplaying Spirits, 3. Real Entity, any association with their fiction is due to the muses and for some combination of these um i would say that it's combinations of two three like like two is seems to be the 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 strongest evidence seems to be in favor of option two i would say but in terms of you know in terms of how reasonable it is i i have no idea Again, I don't evoke fictional entities. I don't evoke fictional entities because I, I like... Look, I like manipulating the stock market with the Damon of Jupiter from Agrippa, thank you very much. Uh, I don't have time to be evoking fucking Scrooge McDuck. Make that what you will. It is funny as hell, though. I, I will say it is funny. Uh, specifically, how do you find out their true identity of the disguised spirit? Uh, my understanding is they yell at you if you ask. They're like, why the fuck did you call me up as this if you're just gonna make me take off the costume? Right, you're making me break character here. Come on, fuck you. That, that kind of is how it seems to work, as weird as that is. Did I? Yeah, okay. Got a little bit more damage. I think I just need to, like, grind souls. Keep saying that. I'm going to do it eventually. I need to just, like, grind souls and, uh... Grind souls, get the... Damage numbers up. Pump my intelligence up to soft cap. Which I think... We'll do farther than soft cap. We'll do like second soft cap. Fuck it. We'll do up to 60. We'll do the big thing. How do you find the name of the entity? You you can get it to just tell you what the name is. The spirits seem to love archetype and theater, even if they are very similar spirits or currents. Yeah, they enjoy... They enjoy acting as much as we do. It's just that they're allowed to act very differently depending on what spirit they're playing, right? So, like, if you think about it, Aphrodite, Ishtar, Astarte, I think, uh, Eostara, Isis, uh, no, Hathor, are all Venerian spirits, but they're all very different. We could interpret them all as being different aspects of... What am I doing? I go down to Undead Parish. Cool. 
we could interpret them all as being different aspects of like the same thing or we could interpret them as being you know we could interpret them theoretically as being um different entities overall A cosplaying spirit once said that they are required to abide by very different protocols depending on what name they are called by. I mean, I think I might just ask this question. Oh, God. I might just... I might do a video on this. This might get a full video. I'm thinking about it. I'm talking myself out of it. I'm talking myself into it, too. So. Goodbye. Moss. Open the can of worms. Yeah, I might, I might do this. I might drag somebody into a fucking video about this. This makes me wonder about the Romans and how... Some gods stay almost the same, yet others, like Juno and Hera, are so different. Um, my understanding is that... The Roman gods are... different enough to where they can be syncretized... but they are still different spirits. That seems to be the case. The difference is we can't change our form, otherwise we totally would act like them in that sense. I mean, have you seen what people get up to in VR chat? Have you seen the kind of, like... People are very, very strange when it comes to... Avatars and, like, fictional... Portrayals of themselves. Very interesting. Th yeah, there might be there might be a um, a mechanic uh, of fictional spirits. I'm not going to cover all spirits because there's too many of them. But fictional spirits might get their might might get a video. I don't know. I might think about that. I'm thinking about it. Dave, I've made the skeleton of the Discord with the verification system and stuff. Tell me what you need done, then I can pass the ownership to you. Um, I need to, like, figure out how I want to set up the fucking Discord. I need, like, I, the problem is not the Discord stuff. I, I have a Discord server, not for the, like, channel and stuff. Um... But I have set up Discord servers in the past. It's just a matter of I need to set up, like, verifications and, like, Patreon bots and all that stuff. So. But I need, in order to do that stuff, I need to contact Patreon. So that's why I am, like, I am slow because I need to contact Patreon support for the thing. Ah, uh, yeah, so... It's not that I don't want it, it's that in order to get the Discord, I need to contact the support people, and I, like, I know customer support people, they are notoriously slow, so I've been dragging my feet, making the process slower, and also we're, like, you know, I've set up the bots and stuff. Okay, fucking, we will talk about this, sir. Ugh. Worst case, we get, like, an unofficial, official Discord server I've been running. I've done this in the past on my own Patreon. Yeah, it's... I don't think it's difficult. It's just a matter of, like, I just need to, like, contact Patreon, which is the difficult part. So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, trust me, I, I want the Discord, but... 
Due to uh, things beyond my control, there are hoops that I need to jump through. Uh, which is the best version of Agrippa's occult philosophy in your humble opinion? Uh, in my not-so-humble opinion, it is Eric Perdue, no contest. That being said, that book is expensive, and I don't blame you for picking up a, a worse version. But it is the best version, if you are reading it in English. Discord has, like, a community system where you can link them. Yeah, I'm... We, we, I will figure it out. DM me on, like, Instagram or Patreon, whatever. I will answer, and we will talk about this. Like, I'll I'll, tr I'll start the, the fixing process of, like, what's wrong with my... What's wrong with it later. But it's, it's something that is really stupid, so... So, spirit stuff, truth verification is important is import methods. Uh, I have an entire topic on that on the Patreon. But for those of you wondering, uh, basically ask verifiable questions. Do not ask unverifiable questions. That is the important thing. So if you're asking a question, you should be able to verify it immediately after you're done. The welcome to the internet describes the internet w way too much. I mean, it's... It really does. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I'll be honest. If you're talking to, uh, for clarification on what I mean by, like, verifiable questions, as part of the question process, you should... Okay, hypothetical situation. I am contacting a spirit who is known for a correspondence to the moon. I ask it, what phase was the moon on in on this day? I can Google this immediately after the operation. Like, you go through and I'm contacting a spirit of Mercury. I don't know how accurate my methods are for contacting this spirit. I ask it what zodiac sign the planet Mercury was on on this day. The only thing this doesn't work with is the sun. That being said, you can probably come up with something for the sun. Um, I know in the past I've used, uh, I know in the past I've used what planets were majorly aspecting the sun on X specific date. That seems to work fairly well. So that is what I would recommend. What are your thoughts on binding spirits to crystals, swords, and what would be the benefit. Um, if you're binding them to swords or crystals, that kind of thing, uh, you want to make sure that the spirit is actually... You would do this as, like, a vessel to talk to them, basically. Um, you wouldn't bind them... You wouldn't bind, like, a conscious spirit to an object unless you had a good fucking reason. And even then, you wouldn't do it permanently unless it was already the spirit of that object so if it was like i have an altar that is dedicated like i have an altar dedicated to this really cool rock i found and i work with this really cool rock i found that's why you would do that so that being said we've been going on for three hours um i apologize for talking about the patreon that being said i am a I, genuinely uh i do want to build the community but that being said I'm work I I will we we will get all the stuff up and running, don't worry. So yeah. Uh this is where I'm gonna take the final five minutes uh for questions and for uh, maybe for initial topics, um as well. Can you make a magical gun? Yes. Now I think that's illegal, so you probably shouldn't.
Like, you, you shouldn't do that. You could, though. Of course, now my mind immediately jumps to all the methods you would use to consecrate that, but, you know, th don't do that. Don't devil may cry yourself. Oh, I guess you would need two magic guns for that. It wasn't magic bullets. I don't remember. It's been a while since I played Devil May Cry. Can you make an existing gun magical? Yeah, also, yes, but still don't do that. There are conceivable theurgic consecrations where you might put a spirit sigil on an object as a sign of a blessing from that spirit. Yeah, but that's different from binding the spirit to the object. That's, that's very different from binding the spirit to the object, though. That's the whole thing. Like, if you're going to bind a spirit to an object, that is... That's different from just... Yeah, this spirit has blessed this object. Alright, so, I'm going to... Suggestion for the next time forbidden... Ma <laughs> suggestion for next time forbidden magic. What stops slash keeps people from doing magic? Um, if you are having problems... Okay. If you are having problems doing magic, look into affirmations and, like, magical... Like, low magic stuff. Like, blessing water. Like, blessing water. Become the most hydrated magician possible. And just constantly bless water before you drink it. Of, like, this water blesses me in order to be able to have a space to practice magic. And you just keep doing that until you, like, drink so much. You, you've done this so much, and then eventually you will get this to happen. Because you're causing it to flow into your life. So yeah, and make sure you say, for the love of God, make sure you say, while well, blessing all involved with, like, elemental stuff. Like, bind down actions not wanted. So yeah. I think that's, uh, that's what the, yeah, that's what the little write-up, write-up manual is going to be about this month. Is, um, magical substitutions and, uh, what you can do for low effort. Like, making a magical shotgun that all the pellets... D dude, th chill with the magical gun. So what's the difference between prayers and affirmations? Um, prayers are directly... Okay, prayers are directly directed at, like, God or divine power. Affirmations are just something you repeat over and over again yourself. Drown, got it. Don't drown, but, like... You know, become become very hydrated is is my <laughs> Of course you can do it with other stuff like just visualization, but you know, you if you can drink as if you can drink a healthy amount of water while getting magical work done, I think that that's a win-win. So yeah. Alright, so uh here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna sign off. After the sign-off, y'all are going to be redirected to Chris's channel, Space Time Sorcerer. He's going to be playing some SMT Nocturne. And he is uh, much more in tune with the Chaos Magic Errant than I am. So, yes. <laughs> Alright? So, that being said, I have been Dave, the Amateur Magus. I hope you were having a good day, and I hope you enjoyed your time on the live stream. If you're not having a good day, hope your day gets better. Take it easy, and uh, signing out.